This year has been a significant year for me. I had a very sad event and had a very wonderful news. The sad event is that my father passed away. The wonderful, happy event is that Mount Fuji was inscribed on the UNESCO's World Heritage List. My father was brought up in the city of Numazu in Shizuoka Prefecture, which is a host to Mount Fuji. And he spent all his school days worshipping and admiring Mount Fuji. So it is quite natural that he had been dreaming of the day when Mount Fuji is designated as a world heritage. He re um, resigned uh, many years ago and moved to Atami, another city in Shizuoka Prefecture, which is known to be um, a wonderful resort town, and lived there until the age of 94. In early May, when I learned that ICOMOS, which is the advisory body of UNESCO, made a recommendation that Fujisan should be inscribed on the World Heritage List. So I immediately went to see my father in the hospital in Atami to share this wonderful news with my father. He, who was already unable to speak, opened his eyes, gave me a big smile, and took my hand. And that was my last conversation with my father. He passed away a few hours later, before dawn. Six weeks later, Mount Fuji was officially designated as World Cultural Heritage. What is significant here is that Mount Fuji was designated as World Cultural Heritage and not World Natural Heritage. It is not the, its beautiful landscape, but its role as a source of artistic inspiration that was appreciated by UNESCO. Mount Fuji inspired many Japanese artists, ranging from the poets who appear in Manyoshu, the oldest anthology of Japanese short poem, Waka, to Katsushika Hokusai and other woodrock print artists in Edo period. The essence of traditional Japanese aesthetics comes from Japanese unique views of nature, I believe. The Western civilization places humans above nature because humans have reason. Whereas in Japan, people tend to think that even humans are no more than part of nature and seek a lifestyle which unites with nature and never challenge it head on. These unique views of nature developed by the Japanese are best represented in the making of Japanese gardens. Japanese gardens are made in full harmony with natural landscape. Sakuteiki, which is an instruction book on garden making, published in the 11th century, tells that if we want to make the best Japanese garden, you have to follow what nature tells you. This is in sharp contrast with the Western gardens. The garden of uh, the Palais de Versailles, outside of Paris in France, is geometrically, geometrically designed, composed of straight lines, complete circles, and to total symmetry, asserting human superiority over nature. However, there are no 
neither straight lines nor complete circles nor perfect symmetry in the real world. They only exist in human brain. The similar difference exists in the world of ceramic ware. You are at Copenhagen teacup is very assertive in trying to make as perfect round as possible, whereas Japanese rakuyaki, the tea ceremony bowl, is intentionally distorted. Japanese feel it is very comfortable because it is natural. The Japanese respect for nature places animals as equal partners of the humans. In Yuzuru, the one of the most famous and uh, widely loved opera in Japan, a crane, Tsuru, transformed itself into a human lady to help a man who saved its life. This may never happen in the Western civilization, because Western civilization, people are supposed to be superior to nature. So maybe a demon transforms a man into a swan, but animals do not transform themselves to express their emotion. Japanese believe that Japanese uh, people or humans are only part of nature, goes on to accept that even furniture has emotion. This is um, Otogizoshi scroll of the medieval ages. This tells a story about a group of furniture which were thrown out into this corner of the garden, get angry about it, and try to threaten the humans as a revenge by transforming them themselves into monsters and demons. So this is scientifically impossible. Therefore, sound totally absurd to most of the people in the West. But Japanese more or less accept it without much difficulty. Now, these uh, Japanese unique views of nature are based on the mixture of the awe, for and love of nature developed over the centuries. You may wonder why the Japanese have developed such ideas or new, such unique uh, views of nature. The answer is the wonderful, scenic views, natural beauty, with distinct four seasons, and the disasters beyond human control, such as volcano eruptions or earthquakes. And the rich natural resources, such as blossoms, fruits, vegetables, fish, that embrace the people immediately after disaster. So I think uh, these unique views of nature developed and held by the Japanese should be better appreciated by the contemporary Japanese and also should be shared by the rest of the world for the following reasons. One, this approach will help us develop a high level of respect for nature which is significantly important to deal with environmental issues, to protect the environment of our planet, including our fight against uh, global warming. Second, this will help us develop sympathy, compassion for others, which is vitally, again, important to enhance mutual understanding amongst the people of different cultural backgrounds. And third, this will lead us to the acceptance of diversity, which, is, which will let us avoid unnecessary conflicts 
and will help us build a true uh, world peace. So I hope the designation of Mount Fuji as a world cultural heritage will highlight these, the importance of these traditional views of nature held by the Japanese and demonstrate the relevance in the 21st century civilization. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me invite you to go back to the life of a diplomat. They say, when a diplomat says yes, he means perhaps. When he says perhaps, he means no. And if he says no, he is no diplomat. <laughs> and when I said yes to the invitation from TEDx Kyoto, I really meant it, because this will, this will provide me with a wonderful opportunity to get this message across. And this is exactly what my father wanted me to do after the official inscription of Mount Fuji on the World Heritage List. Thank you very much. <laughs>